Greetings guys, welcome to Cal Preach. Um, I am here in my kitchen and it seems like a bunch of you have really enjoyed these cooking videos, so I'm gonna do another one. But because this is unedited, you guys, I have to like pre-chop everything because otherwise we'll be here for hours, like an hour and a half at least, and I can't do that. So, um, but it doesn't take an hour and a half. I don't want you to freak out. It's just that I like get distracted and then I'm like picking up my phone and listening to podcasts and mm. so there you go. Okay, I'm making a chicken curry right now. And for any of you vegetarians out there, you definitely do not have to use the chicken. You can just use the veggies, okay? Um, I went to uh, my brother's house yesterday and we had a barbecue and it was really, really fun, but family is super stressful. And you know, it's like you really try to relax and you really try to like enjoy and there's just this underlying current of anxiety going on and I gotta work on that and I've gotta learn to really cover myself in you know, in God's robe of love and protection and shield because when I go and I'm not covered in that robe, sometimes I can be vulnerable to um, anxiety. So, is that my dog? What's my dog doing? It's my cat? I can't figure it out. Anyway, um, so here we have, okay, carrots, onions, broccoli. I'm gonna chop a few bell peppers. And we've got a veggie curry on the stove. I mean, I'm sorry, veggie broth on the stove, ready to go. And um, as soon as that's boiling, I am going to put two cups of rice. So this is just an organic veggie broth that I put in there. And then we've got chopped chicken. You know, I told you Mr. Grumpy doesn't like things chunky. So I cut it really small. And uh, yeah, and then, oh, look, that's boiling. So now ooh, we can put this in. I just go like that. Oh, it is pokey. Pokey, are you freaking kidding me? The diva. What are you doing out there? It's 90 degrees. Come in, please, entre vous. Okay, so, um, I sent an email to Timothy Keller. He's going through chemo treatments right now uh, because he has pancreatic cancer. For those of you who don't know who Timothy Keller is, he's my absolute number one favorite pastor in the world. And um, I sent him an email like two weeks ago and I basically said, would you adopt me? I want you to be my dad. And I also said, I'd love to come to your apartment and make homemade soup. And I didn't hear back from him. And I was convinced that he thought I was a complete wacko. So I've been sitting around kind of stressing about that. And I didn't want to tell you guys because I was a little embarrassed. <laughs> and then I got an email back finally this morning from him. And he was like, you're so sweet, you know, um, he, you know, and then he answered my, my question. I'm kind of lying. He didn't actually say I was sweet. He basically avoided everything I said about him being my dad and adopting me and me making him soup at his house. Um, so that was a lie from the pit of hell. I wish he had said you're so sweet. Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. All right, I'm moving the rice around. Um, he just avoided the whole, will you adopt me and can I make soup for you at your house conversation in the email. And he just <laughs> addressed my question. And my question was basically, I was just happy I got an email back because then it made me feel like maybe he doesn't think I'm completely insane. So once it's boiling, you guys, once it's boiling, and it's just like a regular jasmine rice. I use organic, but whatever. Not everybody has to go with organic. Um, a lot of things I don't do organic. I'm not like, it has to be organic, everything. I'm not that way. But with rice, I like it to be as clean as absolutely possible. So anyway, 
I sent him this email a couple of weeks ago and I was like, listen, I know that you're going through chemo treatments, but I have a question for you. And if you're up for it, will you answer this question for me? And if not, totally cool. I understand you're going through a lot. We know what it's like to go through chemo, but I kind of thought, you know, maybe if I ask him a question, it'll take his mind off of things and he'll, you know, it'll give him something to do other than think about the fact that he's sick and that he is going through chemo treatment. So, you know, sometimes, sometimes it helps people get out of their own head when you tell them that your own problems, you know, cause I remember when, I, when Vance was going through his chemo treatments, it was like, nobody wanted to talk to me about what was going on in their life because they felt like what I was going through was so huge that they didn't want to burden me with their problems. When in fact, if they had talked to me about what was going on in their life, it would have made me feel so good. A, it would have gotten me out of everything I was going through, which was horrendous, and it would have gotten my mind onto other things. And B, it would have made me feel good that my friends were still treating me like I was their friend and normal. And C, it, it would have felt good to be able to have some feedback and to be able to maybe not necessarily have the answer, but to be able to know what's going on in my friends' life lives makes me feel alive and normal, you know, we, we, we all share about what's going on, but because Vance was sick and going through chemo, a lot of my friends were like, didn't want to burden me, but it's kind of the opposite. So if you have a friend who's going through a hard time, you know, you can always just say, I have stuff going on in my life, but I don't want, I feel kind of uncomfortable sharing it because I don't want to burden you, but they'll probably be like, no, please burden me. Please take me out of my head, you know, and um, tell me what's going on in your life. So back to the email, back to the email. So I, I asked him, I said, look, here's my issue. All right. I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. I do. I believe that. I believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Not a problem for me to believe that. Totally, totally believe it with all my heart. I believe that he, um, that, that he paid for my sin and your sin. I believe that. Don't have a problem with that. My issue and my thorn in my side that has bugged me and frustrated me for so many years as a Christian is that Jesus Christ is the one door to saving the human soul. The one door. And that there is no other way to save the soul, the human soul. It's only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, the, the problem I've had with that is I guess maybe the exclusivity of that truth. And that's what has sort of not bothered, well, maybe bothered me a little bit, but it, I think I've just been lying to myself about how much I actually believe that Jesus is actually the one true and only way. He's the one door. And I just have to get really super honest with myself about that. Honey, could you hand me the potatoes, my love? There you go, honey. Thank you. Thank you, sweetie. Oh, you're so loved. Everybody loves you. Oh, don't make those sounds. It's very inappropriate. Everybody loves our little kisses. Bye. Okay. You're not Mr. Grumpy today. I've been up and down, but mostly up. Thank you for the prayers. Thank you for the prayers. He's happier. And the sad thing is because he's happier, I'm happier. I mean, I know that's part of love, but it sucks that like I'm so codependent in that way when he's not happy. Oh, gosh. It's a problem. Okay. Anyway. Um, rice is on. So what I do, I'm going to get back to this whole thing that I was just talking about. I, I hate to be ADD. I'm really sorry. I am ADD, by the way. I do have that issue. So bear with me. Okay. So I'm going to add some garlic powder to our rice right now. Okay. I'm going to add garlic powder. I love garlic powder because I'm not patient enough to like actually crush garlic and like put it through the thing, the machine and put it in the rice. It would taste a million times better. So anybody who has that patience, my hat's off to you. Do it. Then I have what's called a Bragg spoon.
sprinkle. It's got 24 herbs. It's got 24 herbs. You can get this on Amazon or at your local Marquette. Okay, and I'm gonna put that in there just to give it some color and some flav, some good flav. And now I'm going to cover, oh, oh. Okay, now this is what you have to be careful of, guys. Look, it's burning. Great. Get Jesus on the phone. Okay, it's burning. I gotta turn it down. Don't forget to turn it down, guys. Yay, yay, yay. This is the problem. Where are my own grates? I don't have any mo I don't have any gloves. This is hot. This is really hot. It's all right. You know, burnt rice is actually yummy. <laughs> it's actually really yummy. Okay, so I went ahead and I and I sent the question to him. I said, so what do I do? about the fact that I struggle with that. I mean, that's a big deal to think that the God of the universe, the God of the universe, his plan was to send his son to die for everybody. For everybody. And that's the answer. That's it. That's it. You accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You accept that he is God. You accept him into your heart. You repent of your sin, and that's how you get saved. And if you don't do that, you're not saved. It's a biggie. It's a big one. It's a big one. And like I said, this is what drives me crazy. I believe that he's the son of God. I believe he rose from the dead. I believe he forgives sin. I forgive, I mean, I believe that, that, he performed all the miracles that he performed. So if you guys would pray for my heart so that I don't have to lie to myself, I can really be in a place of complete, you know, uh, belief and, 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 and authentic belief that Jesus Christ was sent by the God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the God of all creation, all time and space. He sent Jesus to die for us on the cross as the answer, as the one way to salvation and eternal life. Hi, baby. Hi, uh, Jameson has a question for you. Jameson has a question for me. Hi, honey. Hi, how you doing? I'm putting onion in the sauce. Yeah? What do I do to the insurance? They don't have your insurance card on file. Well, no, they do, but it's just, it's just asking, do you want to use the insurance? Yes, we use the insurance. Always use the insurance, honey. Always use our insurance. Okay. okay. I'm so proud of you. You got here fast. Yeah, from LA, that was a quick trip. Um, are you coming straight here? I'm making chicken curry. Okay, come eat, honey. Mommy's got food for you. Okay, bye. Bye. What, baby? <laughs> you guys are so patient. Seriously. What does it say, honey? I'm so confused. It just says, fill my insurance yeah, that would be your mother. The responsible party is me, okay? But up here, it says dad. Oh, well then, then use dad. Either one is fine. Okay, but use dad. Okay, I gotta go. I'll see you soon, love you, bye. I love you too, bye-bye. Oh my gosh, you guys, seriously, I love you. I love you. That was very kind of you to sit around and listen to that. Okay, so now we're putting potato in, oh, I forgot to tell you, I put onions in this sauce. Now this sauce here is the curry, okay guys? Now the curry, guys, is coconut milk in a can and one can of tomato sauce because my daughter said my curry is not thick enough so I thought, you know what? I'm gonna add a can of tomato sauce to the curry to see if it thickens it up just a little bit. I don't know if it will, but it might. And here's the coconut curry cans. Did I throw those coconut curry cans away? Anyway, okay, we're not going to worry about that. So this rice is really, something's happening. This is not good. Father God, help me now. This is not good. Okay, it needs a top and it, 
I'm, did I do something wrong? Like, I can't figure out if I did something wrong. Okay, so anyway, I got an email back from his wife, Kathy. And she said, China, I'm really sorry. I hope this is okay, but I'm going to be responding because Timothy can't respond right now. Um, and she said, here's the deal. I am not quoting her exactly. She said, here's the deal. Jesus Christ is the triune. It's a triune God. Follow me here. Jesus Christ is the a part of the triune. Okay, so the word, which is the Bible, Logos, became flesh. And Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I'm having breakthroughs as I'm speaking to you. Is the Son of God. He came to the, into the world, our world, part of the triune, part of the three, okay? God, Father, Son. I mean, uh, Father, God, Holy Spirit. Okay, so he came into the world perfect. He's perfect. He's perfect. He's perfect. Jesus is perfect. Nothing wrong with Jesus. He lived a sinless, perfect life. And he is love and he is light. He is perfect. He's the son of God. He lived the perfect life. So he was the perfect substitute because he's God himself. Now, here's what we're getting to. This was the kind of breakthrough she gave me. She said, China, when Jesus was on the cross, nailed to the cross, it wasn't Jesus, it was God. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, nailed to the cross, your creator, the creator of the human soul. Okay, again, I'm not quoting her perfectly, but this is what she was saying. You have to wrap your head around the fact that yes, it was Jesus, um, the man, the son of God who came in the flesh, but it was God that bore the punishment. So it was Jesus on the cross, but Jesus is God. So it was God bearing the punishment for all mankind. And I kind of had this aha breakthrough epiphany moment where I was like, oh my gosh, God died on the cross. God died on the cross. Okay, makes me want to cry. So I knew it, but I didn't know it. Have you ever had that happen to you? You know something intellectually, but then it pierces your heart and you know it. So my roadblock was that I was thinking Jesus died on the cross and he's the son of God, but I wasn't realizing that he's also God, Jesus is God. And I knew it, but I didn't know it here, right here. So I'm so grateful because that's what I needed. That's what I needed to hear. I needed to hear it was God on the cross. And you've probably heard me say it. That's the craziest thing of all. You've probably heard me say God was on the cross. I mean, you know, I knew it but I didn't know it. Okay, so I'm putting carrots in this sauce now. This really should be boiling. See, I'm not a cooking show chef person, but okay. So this should be boiling or at least simmering before I put the carrots in, which it's not, which is fine. That's okay. Carrots, you know, they take about the same amount of time as a potato um, to, to get cooked all the way through. So we'll put the potatoes in too, why not? So we're gonna put the potatoes in and um, those are gonna get, you know, you wanna be able to get a fork through the potato and a fork through the carrot. You don't want it too hard, too soft. You want it somewhere in between, just enough to get a carrot uh, fork through. Okay, how's my rice doing? We never put a top on it. Ay, ay, ay. You know, it's gonna be fine. I just wonder if I need to add more liquid. I know that's what you're thinking. You're like, China, add more liquid. <laughs> but here's the deal, I put, four cups already, four cups in there. Isn't that enough? That's, I always use four cups. Why is it doing that? Okay, so then, so then she, sorry guys, I know I'm making you so dizzy. So then she, uh, 
she, uh, she said, uh, oh, let me show, that's all she said. That's all she said. She said it was God that died on the cross and I had my epiphany and my breakthrough moment. So um, the, the one way, if that's hard for you, that he's the one way to salvation, trust me, I sympathize with you. I really get that. I really, really get that um, because it's, it's huge and it's gigantic. But here's the deal. If it's true, and I always say, it, and it is, that Jesus is God, and Jesus is also the Son of God, and Jesus is also the Holy Spirit, so Jesus is life itself, Jesus is the resurrection and the life. He said it himself. I am the resurrection and the life. So if that's all true, which it is, then God bore our punishment on the cross and died for all mankind. And if that's true, then of course that's the one way to salvation. There's no argument. What kind of argument can you have against that if God himself came into the world and died for you and died for me, then where's the argument? Well, there, there really is no argument. If Jesus, if Jesus is God, which he is, and he died on the cross, then that's the one way to salvation because God died for us. Okay. I feel like I'm repeating myself, but like sometimes I need to do that just to get it through my thick skull. And so I hope that helped you. Um, now we're doing the bell peppers real quick, okay? We're gonna chop these babies. And yep, that's good, sorry. I'm gonna get this, guys. So, um, yeah, oh, by the way, this is at a nice little boil now, okay? A little nice little boil. So we're gonna take it down to more of a simmer. There we go. A little bit more of a simmer. It's still boiling, but more of like a simmer boil. And those are gonna be great. And then we're gonna add all the different little sauces that I like to add um, to that sauce. But we're not gonna do that now. We're just gonna deal with the, I'm so sorry. Come on, stupid stand, this dumb stand. I've got to upgrade my, my stand. Okay, here we go. So, um, so I, um, I just, you know, I've been a little down. You guys know that. I told you that. I've been a little down and it's been really, um, so I'm just going to chop those about that size, all of them, you know, like, I don't know, about that size. Everybody in my family likes things smaller, but you know, if you're, more into bigger chunks, do bigger chunks. Bigger chunks are fine. Nothing wrong with bigger chunks. So I've been a little down and, um, you know, I get frustrated when I get down because as you know, I'm a little hard on myself. So I'm trying not to be so hard on myself because you know what guys, being hard on ourselves, really what comes out of it? What do we get out of being hard on ourselves? You know, it's like, I just get frustrated with myself. Like really? With all the prayer that you do and with all the sermons that you listen to and your California preaching channel and you're still a little down, like, what is it? And I realize that, you know, ultimately, you guys know my biggest fear. It's that, like, I have this feeling of, like, okay, so I build all these things that I love, my family, memories, a beautiful home, and then we die. It's like, I, sometimes I struggle with that. It's like, why? What's the point? What's the point of being here if I'm just gonna die, you know? And I, and I know that sounds really cryptic and I know that sounds really negative and, and it's, it's definitely like the devil. I know it's Satan. I know that he's just trying to torment me, but literally that's what I think. I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna let all this love into my heart. I'm gonna love my kids as much as I can. I'm gonna love my family. I'm going to love my husband. I'm gonna build all these memories just so that I can wither up and die. And I know I have eternal life, thank you, Jesus. But it makes me sad. It makes me sad that ultimately the end, 
is death. And that's another reason why Jesus had to come, guys. Because it's not death. Our last breath is our first breath in eternity. Gosh, it just frustrates me so much. It's like, okay, all of this, and then I'm just going to die. And I know that sounds so dumb, but it really haunts me. And the Bible says that death haunts us. It says it right there in one of the Psalms. And, you know, it's like, I, I guess with Corona and with, you know, all the riots and everything, it just amplified my fear of all of this. And just, you know, the isolation of, of quarantining and all of that is, has just made it a little more difficult to stay positive. Anybody else identifying? It's just a little harder to stay positive. And you have all this time on your hands to think about stuff, you know? And I know that these are luxury problems. Everybody has to die. Billions upon billions upon billions of people have died before me. It's not that big of a deal. It's really not that big of a deal. So you're going to die. Billions of people have done it and you're going to do it and you'll be fine. I understand. Like, get over yourself. It just makes me sad because I have abandonment issues, okay? You guys, I have abandonment issues and I don't want to have to say goodbye to the people I love and I want to be around forever and I want to see everybody grow old and I want to see grandchildren and I, I want to do it. Oh, I just don't want this to end. So anyway. Um, <sighs> look, I understand that being a Christian is like about picking up your cross and going and walking into the world and dealing with it. I get that. Dealing with what's in front of us. Life is not always a bed of roses, you know? And there are people who are really suffering. I am not really suffering. Okay, what's happening now with my rice? Okay, I'm losing track here. Okay, we're just gonna mix this. All right, and now I'm just gonna throw in the bell peppers, okay? Handful of bell peppers. It gives it color and it tastes really good. And you don't have to cook bell peppers very long because bell peppers are really nice. Sorry, I must be driving you so dizzy. Okay, and crispy. They're crispy and they're nice kind of crunchy in the curry. You know, it's, 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 it's a preference. I prefer a little bit of a crunch. Oh, guys, I love you. Thank you for listening to me. <sighs> Lord, we're gonna end this now. I know I haven't thrown the chicken in or anything. I'm the worst chef person ever. I wanted to show you the finished product, but I hope you got a little bit of um, inspiration possibly for dinner for tonight or tomorrow night. Um, and then I throw the broccoli in at the very, very end. The broccoli goes in at the end, guys, because this is already cooked broccoli actually, so I cheated a little bit, but even if it's raw, just wait until the very end to throw it in. It only needs like five minutes because you want it to be, you know, you don't want it to be yellow and mushy, okay? So you throw it at the very end. And if you're using chicken, just throw the chicken in. Like now would be a good time to throw the chicken in actually. So we can throw the chicken in. And um, I'm gonna end this with prayer because I, I just don't want this to be a downer. I don't want this to be a downer vlog. I love you guys. I always tell the truth though, you know? I always tell the truth because that's how we get intimacy with Jesus. So I'm throwing the chicken in. It's gonna cook pretty fast. Um, and then you can just keep it on a low simmer. And um, then you throw the broccoli in like five minutes before you're ready to serve, just on a low simmer. It'll cook, I promise. Don't be afraid. And, um, and, and all, and just to sweeten it up really quick, I just want to tell you just to sweeten it up. I do use agave, taste it though, cause it can get really sweet if you're not careful, taste it, salt it, put all the herbs that you want in there. Oh, and the most important part is you need a really fabulous curry powder. Get a curry powder that tastes really good and put enough in there that it tastes like curry and also some turmeric powder, turmeric. Okay, so you wanna use turmeric as well. So you can shake that in there. Makes for a beautiful, beautiful curry. 
All right, now we're going to pray. We're going to end this right here to prayer. 29 minutes. Wow, what do you know? Okay, Lord Jesus, Father, we magnify you right now. We lift you up, Lord. We thank you for our lives. We thank you, Jesus, for putting our souls inside of our bodies, Lord, and for making us each individual and for making us each like a separate personality. It's such a miracle, Lord, the way you did that. Everybody is so unique. And I thank you for that, Father. Thank you for uniqueness. Thank you for the uniqueness of nature that we see abounding all around us. And thank you for different personalities. And thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. And sometimes it's really overwhelming. Sometimes it's really scary. And sometimes it's just, <sighs> it's just painful. And it's hard because we know that because of the fall, everything's broken and living in this brokenness is just too much to bear sometimes. And that's why we come to you, Father. That's why we come to you humbly and we ask you to lift us up and we ask you to encourage us and to give us a hope, a living hope in you, Father. We crush all of our idols. We make them dust at our feet and we put you on the throne of our hearts right now, Father God. And we ask you to forgive us for any subconscious or conscious um, rejection of you or, or, or sinning that we're not even aware of, Father. We ask you to just purify us, purify us like gold, God, and help us to remember that we are going to emerge from anything that we're walking through like purified gold. We will emerge. Thank you, Father, for giving everybody who's watching the courage to put one foot in front of the other and to run this marathon, run this race, Lord, for you. And we know that at the finish line, Lord, at the finish line, we will be crowned and that you are there and that you're going to hold us and you're going to be there for us, holding us in your everlasting arms and that we will be received by you, Father. We thank you, Father, for writing us into the book of life. We thank you, Lord, that we are your children and that we come to you like little children. And I thank you that the gospel is foolishness to, to those who are perishing. You know, it's really, it, that's, that's what I have to remind myself of. Like everything I just shared with everybody today, Lord, you know, it can sound like foolishness that you sent your son to die for us and that that's the one way to heaven. It can sound like foolishness. I remember a time when it did for me and I ask you, God, I ask you, Father God, to confirm for us, confirm and to establish us in that truth that you sent your only son for us. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Would you please just stamp that on our hearts and help us, Lord, all to receive that and know that that is ultimate truth. That is ultimate truth, Father. Thank you for continuing to sanctify us and for continuing to, to, to mature us on this journey with you, Father. We pray all these things in your mighty, mighty, mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Remember, you guys, life is fragile. Handle with prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Gigi, for that amazing comment. I'm going to take that with me. I love my little one-liners, and that's going to become one of my little one-liners. God bless everybody. Peace of Christ.